After completing my pharmacy residency, there was a few things that I wish I knew before I started. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing 10 things I wish I knew before I started my pharmacy residency. The first thing that I wish I would have known is that residency is for you. It's not about impressing your preceptors or trying to be an impressive resident. It's about learning. Residency is really about learning the knowledge and skills that you need to be an effective pharmacy practitioner once you're done with residency. As a student who just went through that residency candidate process, you're in that mindset of trying to do everything you can to be standout or the best that you can be so you get that knockout letter of recommendation. And while you wanna have a good letter of recommendation from your residency preceptors, it's not about standing out, it's about learning the things that you need to learn. Even if you wanna do a PGY2 or get a job where you're working as a resident, I promise you, if you focus on learning, you will get so much more out of residency and you will also be a better candidate for those positions later on. This brings me to the second thing I wish I would have known, and that is done is better than perfect. The quickest way to fail your residency or get yourself in hot water is by not turning in your projects on time. If you're taking care of patients and doing patient workups or creating a plan for their treatment, they deserve your A plus work. All of the other stuff that you have to do in residency can take your B plus work. My third tip is to find a mentor at your program. I do know that some programs have like a formal mentorship program built into their residency, but others are a little bit more informal. And either way, you need to find somebody that's going to be your go-to mentor throughout the year. If your program does not have a built-in mentorship program, try to make connections with the preceptors that you're most interested in being mentored by. And the way to do that is to have them precept a presentation or a project or to take their rotation. Depending on the schedule, you may not have the rotation right away. So if you are really curious, just ask them if you can sit down for coffee or just pick their brain or ask them questions because building connections is the best way to build a mentor. I cannot stress how important it is to take advantage of the knowledge and the journey that your preceptors have went through when it comes to building your own success and your own future as a pharmacist. My next tip is to connect with other residents. If you have co-residents, they can be some of your greatest support throughout the program because nobody else knows what you're going through except for them. If you have friends at other programs, they are also a great resource because they understand the stresses of residency. And so when you talk to them about how difficult things are, they get it. Family and friends are great and you absolutely need them as a support system, but just realize that no matter how hard you try to explain what you're going through, they don't understand and they're just not gonna get it. And that's okay, they can support you in other ways and oftentimes understand that what you're going through is difficult. They just may not get it the same way as other residents do. Number five is don't procrastinate on your major project. Data collection sucks. Nobody wants to do it. It is the least fun part about doing research. However, it is important, so don't put it off. Create a plan at the beginning of the year on how you're going to approach this once you're approved for IRB, and then stick to that plan, no matter how hard your week gets. Trust me, you do not want to be stuck doing 50 or 60 data collections a day at the end when you're really close to needing that data and you haven't done any of it yet. Your major project is a marathon not a sprint. Number six is the more effort that you put into your evaluations, the more you're going to get out of them. Yes, evaluations aren't fun. Nobody likes to hear all the things that they are doing wrong, even if you are going to hear a few things that you're doing great. They also take a ton of time if you're going to do them correctly. However, as a resident, this is one of the last times you're going to be able to have a formal time to sit down and really self-evaluate yourself and your performance at work. And so you should take advantage of it because you're also going to learn a lot about ways to improve your performance as a pharmacist, which is going to make you a better pharmacist for your patients in the future. Number seven is that being a preceptor is harder than it looks. I've talked about this on my channel before, but being a preceptor is not easy. I knew precepting was a lot of hard work before I took on my first student, but let me tell you that first student was a wake-up call. The amount of time it takes to do the evaluations on the other side to review the student's work, and also trying to be conscious of where they are at in the program and what kind of feedback you're going to give them based on where they should be at this level in their training is a lot harder than it seems. 
It's also difficult to have hard conversations with the student, especially if they're struggling in an area. I love to precept. It is so rewarding and one of my favorite parts of my job, but it is a difficult part of my job and it was something that I learned in residency and wish more residents knew that before you take on your first student, be prepared for a lot more work than you're expecting. Number eight is that you can fail as a resident. I know that part of me realized that this was something that could happen, but when I was actually in residency and I heard about past residents who didn't make it through the program, it was a bit of a wake-up call for me that this was not something that you just complete. It's something that you could fail or get fired for, and that was a little bit scary. This is a job, and it's a job where you're taking care of patients, and you need to treat it like one. Number nine was that taking care of my mental and physical health would make me a better resident. There is so much emphasis on things like making sure you get all of your work done or doing a good job and learning as much as possible that most people don't tell you you that you also need to prioritize your sleep and that you also need to work out and you know maybe occasionally eat a vegetable instead of grabbing a burger in the cafeteria. Honestly I thought these things weren't possible when I first started as a resident and with the processes I had in place and the lack of skills that I had in this area I couldn't do them but I built them over time and when I started sleeping more working out in the mornings before I went to work and then also trying to incorporate some healthy eating here and there. I feel like my brain got a lot clearer and I was able to focus better and I was just overall a better resident and had better retention and memory and learning abilities than I did whenever I wasn't prioritizing my health. And number 10 was that if you are struggling, you need to reach out for help. I know that not every program may feel that it is supportive for your well-being and your health. And so I want to remind you that you have options outside of people within your program, even within that organization that can help you. Your hospital may have an employee assistance program. And if you have one of those, they can offer health and well-being resources, some of which can even be therapy sessions for particular instances such as patient loss. If you have a mentor either within the program or somebody that you spoke to in pharmacy school that understands you, that could be a great person to go to when you really are needing help. If you have a therapist or a doctor, this is another great person to turn to. I want to emphasize here that you are not weak for needing help. You are in a work environment that is not setting you up for a healthy lifestyle. I want to remind you that pharmacy residency was modeled after medical residencies. And if you don't know the backstory of medical residencies, they were created in the late 1800s by a man who was a surgeon. And the surgeon created this teaching method while he was experimenting with using cocaine as an anesthetic and he became addicted to cocaine, which he then treated with morphine. So if you wonder where the crazy hours and the workload came from and why you feel like you can't handle it, now you know. With that, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Now that I'm looking back,